Arguably one of the most important aspects of a comic book movie are the costumes. When bringing these larger than life characters into live action, it's important to get the way they look right. We've come a long way from the days of black leather suits when creators were afraid to embrace the look of the comics, as nowadays these adaptations are getting more and more accurate with their costumes. So, in today's video I'm going to rank my top 25 favorite superhero movie costumes from Marvel and DC to decide who has the best drip once and for all. Kicking off the list at number 25 is Thor's outfit from Thor Love and Thunder, that fur coat from the beginning of the movie. Thor's been lucky to have a lot of great suits in the MCU. They've never done him dirty in my opinion, even that blue and yellow one that a lot of people hate I think looks good, but I think the standout by far is this fur coat from the beginning of Love and Thunder. Say what you will about that movie, but they nailed this design for what a modern Thor should look like. And despite only being in the movie for 5 minutes somehow, that fur coat is perfect. This is exactly what I think Thor should be looking like going forward. Before this, I would have said his Infinity War costume, but I love how this is sleeveless. It merges that Norse background when you think of what Thor would look like with the MCU design, where it takes the all-black element that you see from movies like Infinity War and Endgame, but it simplifies the design, it adds a more comforting feel to it, and it puts that fur cape on the back, which I think has a really good accent to the suit and makes it stand out amongst other costumes in the MCU because you don't really see fur coats anywhere else. It looks so clean. I love the gold accents and the black leather. It fits so well for Thor at this point in his life. It's a great evolution of the past looks that we've seen. I love that it shows the arms. Hemsworth worked hard for him, so you might as well let him show him. And I think it's the best Thor suit we've gotten. So if we do get a Thor 5, which I think we should, please let him wear this costume again for the full movie. It is perfect. Up next, number 24 is Harley Quinn's outfit in The Suicide Squad. Now, I love The Suicide Squad. I love James Gunn as a director, but I hate how we only got to see Harley's best look for like 10 minutes in the movie. It is a phenomenal outfit. I love how it embraces the comic design while it brings new elements that would make sense for this universe. They tried something new with that bubblegum punk look in Suicide Squad, but that really didn't work for me. They were trying too hard to stand out and look edgy, and they really over-sexualized her in a way that did the character a disservice. But when they brought in that classic black and red color design finally into the DCEU, it did not disappoint. It carries on elements from that classic jester look of hers, but it does it in a more modern way. It's the perfect design for Harley at this day and age. It's a new take on the character. It has all these little designs on there that add personality to it with the belt buckle and all the little logos on there which absolutely is something that Harley would be wearing. I love that she finds her own identity. It's one of the costumes on this list where it signifies a specific point in their character arc where Harley has come so far and now she's got this costume that signifies she's developed her own identity, which I really like. I just think it's a beautiful suit and it's criminal that we only got to see it for a few minutes. This would probably be up higher on the list if we got to see it more and I could appreciate it, but James Gunn, you're gonna pay for that one day. I'm gonna make sure you do. Unless you bring Margot back, please. Just please bring her back. I'm begging you, dude. Number 23 is Captain Marvel's suit in the Marvels, which is an outfit that I don't think gets talked about enough because not many people watch the Marvels. And you know what? You're missing out. This movie's great. But I think that this suit here, it is a really good design. And especially for the MCU, which has a tendency to over-design some costumes, it's so simple. And you're going to learn throughout this video that I am a sucker for a simple design. That star on that costume really stands out. I love how much it pops against the dark blue and dark red. If I had to change anything, Thing, I'd make the colors a little more vibrant. I think that this would be maybe even as far as like the top 15 if it had like a bright red to contrast that with that dark blue slash black. But I just really like this suit. I think the texture looks great on it. It doesn't look very flat at all. It's not often you see suits like this in the MCU to where it's really just like three different parts. There's that shoulder part, that red accent on her chest, the big star, and then the black pants. And I think it looks great like that. I feel like this should be the standard of the MCU going forward where the suits are exactly how they look in the comics. They don't add a lot of extra panels or unnecessary lines. I think it looks really good and it deserves so much more credit because it stands out from everything else she's worn. It's a great look from the comics. With a few minor tweaks, this could be one of the best comic book movie costumes of all time. And number 22, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Team Suits. And now I love how Gunn reinvented the Guardians designs for the MCU, but it was so satisfying to finally see them wearing their costumes. I was really happy that they got to wear these suits before it was too late and the team was no longer going to be there in this last hurrah it was so nice to see them actually wear the team suits it really symbolizes how they've evolved over the trilogy to where in the first movie they're kind of forced to work together and they decide they're going to be a team the second movie we see them being a team and they're still trying to adjust to that and now in this third movie they've been a team for years in the mcu timeline and i like that they have these suits to symbolize that it's a really cool thing to track visually as their suits grow closer and closer to where they went just from matching clothes to actual team uniforms 
uniforms. And I like that they're these baggy uniforms because I love a good spandex look, but I think baggy uniforms fit them in this because it feels like they're actually treating themselves as these peacekeepers in the universe trying to guard the galaxy. And the suits do a great job of showing that. It's the look from the comics. It has that classic blue and red pattern. And I think the colors stand out enough and look really good. It's a perfect translation from that comic design. And I hope that we do see the Guardians again. I like that they all had them on in that post credit scene. And I'm hopeful that they continue this trend of having them wear these team uniforms because I think they look really good. Number 21 is Captain America's suit in the Winter Soldier. Just please hear me out for a second. Don't hurt me for putting it this low. I know a lot of people might have this as their favorite comic book movie costume of all time. I think that's a fair take. It's a perfect stealth suit. I really like how they reinvented that costume for a modern day. It's this modern take on Captain America that moves away from the stars and stripes and has a more low-key design to it, which I think looks gorgeous. It's sleek. It's clean. I really like this, but... For me, I prefer that red, white, and blue classic design for Captain America. It's just a taste of preference. I still think this suit is flawless, but when it comes to my taste, I would like to see Captain America in that red, white, and blue all the time. It's a simple costume just the way I like it. It stands out. You can tell what it is from far away. It's a great translation of that Secret Avengers costume. This is one of the better adapted costumes because they did a great job bringing it into live action. And I'm glad we got to see it again in Avengers Endgame. I know this is Chris's favorite Captain America costume to wear. Despite it not being my favorite Captain America, suit i do genuinely think it's a really good design and it gets a lot of praise for good reason but as the captain america enthusiast i am you're gonna find out i have a lot of takes on captain america suits in this video <laughs> At number 20 is Wolverine's costume in Deadpool and Wolverine. I don't even have to see the movie yet to know that this is one of the best costumes of all time. If you would have shown me this even two years ago, I never would have believed you. It is still crazy to me that we're going to see Hugh Jackman finally wear that yellow suit. I've waited 20 years for this my entire life. I've wanted to see him wear that after they teased it in a deleted scene in the Wolverine. This has been something I've been anxiously anticipating after he retired in Logan. I thought we were never going to see it, but here we are now. He's going to be wearing it the entire movie, and that's just kind of surreal to me. It's beautiful seeing him wear that yellow spandex because for a while, people always joked that it wouldn't work in live action, but they managed to flawlessly translate it in a way that looks great. So suck it, Fox. I would prefer this than black leather. Rest in piss. It is by far the best Wolverine suit we've seen in live action. It's not even close looking at all those other ones. And even though it has sleeves sometimes, I still think it looks good, but look at how he looks when those sleeves are ripped off and the gun show is out. Like, that is gorgeous. I know a lot of people have a lot of complaints about it not having shoulder pads. I prefer if it had shoulder pads too, but it's a reference to his first appearance. So I think it's a cool idea to do that and it gives us this unique design. And then even look at the cow. That is the perfect Wolverine cow. It even passes the two Batman kissing test. It is just a perfect look for that character. We are so blessed to be living in a time where we get to see Hugh Jackman wearing this costume after all these years. And I am going to enjoy every second of it because this costume is just mwah, chef's kiss. At number 19, we have Dr. Fate's suit in Black Adam, a movie that truly did change the hierarchy of power, just not in the way that Dwayne expected. Now, I think that movie is kind of messy, but I think Dr. Fate is by far the standout of the entire movie. He stole the show and looked good doing it. This is a gorgeous design that they really translated well from the comics. There's no unnecessary panels or lines, just a beautiful costume. It's simple. It's clean. I love the symbols in the pattern and texture on there. It adds a lot to it. It makes it feel more mystical and adds that otherworldly element element to it, which I think is a really good idea. The colors are so good. I love that bright blue and that shiny gold. They contrast off of each other so well. I think this would be a lot higher up if they gave him those glowing eyes the entire movie. They only do it in the one scene when he's already dead and nobody's wearing this helmet, which I think is an odd idea, but otherwise I really like what they did. It's a different design traditionally for the helmet, which I think is an interesting way to go. It's not as symmetrical as it usually is, which surprisingly I like a lot. It adds a lot of character to it, but I think it really just needed those glowing eyes. Otherwise, I a really good suit. It's one of the best costumes in the DCEU, which is saying a lot because they rarely miss with their suits, and I think is by far the best part of Black Adam, and it's so satisfying to look at him that entire movie. I would watch that film again just to see Pierce Brosnan in that glistening armor. Number 18 is Black Manta, specifically his suit from Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Now, Aquaman 2 came and went faster than any of us could have anticipated, but they took an already perfect Black Manta design and made it even better by streamlining it. I love the way he looked in that first movie with that Atlantean armor he modified, but the way that they took that design and simplified it here is perfect. I love the armored wetsuit look they went for here. It's so much better than that big bulky armor when they give him this tight wetsuit because it one resembles the comics more, two makes sense
sense for the movie because he's more powerful and doesn't need the armor, but it just looks so clean. The silver on the black is sleek. I think it works really well. It adds some shiny elements to the costume. So it's not just another all black suit because there's enough of those out there. The fact that they did his big dumb helmet in a way that actually looks cool will always surprise me because on the comics that has always been like a unique design, but I always thought it would look goofy in live action. But in the first movie, it looked badass. And now in this one, it looks even better somehow. I love the silver look to it. The contrast between that and the big red eyes looks so good. And while that movie might have dropped the ball on his character, they did him justice with that suit design. And I think that all comic book movie costumes should strive to be at least this faithful. Number 17 is the Iron Man Mark III armor all the way back from the first Iron Man movie in 2008. I think that Iron Man has not had a single bad main suit design. They all look great, but when you tell me to think of Iron Man, this is the suit I think of. For me, it's hard to choose between this and the Mark 85 from Endgame. I like how the Mark 85 is sleek. I like how it finally brings that coloring from the comics into live action, but this is the default Iron Man suit for me. I will always think of this one as my favorite. It feels real and tangible because it was on set. It was this real suit he had to wear. And I think that goes a long way and they made this suit work in live action in a time where comic book movies feared accuracy and I think it deserves some points for that because if you look at this concept art that was from an original Iron Man movie that was in development and I think around 2005 we could have gotten a very different Iron Man suit that was much more cartoonish and I think that could work in a different take but for the MCU I think this is a way that brings that classic Iron Man design to live action in an authentic way that still feels faithful to the comics while doing a new take that basically became the status cool for what Iron Man looked like for the next decade of storytelling and I think it's a really good suit and it will forever just be the de facto Iron Man suit for me in my mind. Number 16 is the Batman suit from the Batman and if you're going to do an armored Batman look this is how you do it. This is by far the best an armored Batman has ever looked in my opinion when you take in different suits from the comics and live action and the Arkham games I think this is what has nailed the armored Batman look and for me I'm not someone who particularly loves an armored Batman look I think that I'm always going to lean more towards the blue and gray Batman and that kind of cloth spandexy texture I'm kind of a traditionalist in that sense I'd say but this won me over immediately because I think it is so detailed and gorgeous and there's so much love and care put into this costume to where every single part of it has a reason for being being there. For a Batman who's in year two of his career, I think this is a great design for him and it feels like something he would be wearing, especially in this grounded universe that Matt Reeves has created. But besides that armored look, this is by far the best Batman cow we've ever seen in live action. It has that long ears you'd want, it has the jawline, which I'm so glad because a lot of the times these movies are afraid to expose the jawline, even though that's such a defining characteristic of the Batman cow. Here, he lets Robert Pattinson's sharp jawline really shine, and I think it's so good for the costume. I love the stitching on there. You can see that this was something that he hand did, and it also shows that he's creating all this on his own. He's still not gotten this technology down patented, and I love that it feels authentically made. Also for this cow, I love how it hides the eyes at different angles to where instead of the white eyes, which a lot of people wanted to see in live action, I think this makes a great case for no white eyes in live action because of how good Patton's acting is with the Justice's eyes. But here at different angles, his eyes are completely covered by the darkness and it makes him look even more intimidating and scary, which I think is a really good look for this character. I love it so much. And then you look down and you see that new unique symbol they went with here. And while a lot of people might not like it because it doesn't have the bad ears or it's not a traditional Batman logo, I think it works for this universe. I hope that as he develops his identity, we do get more of a traditional logo for him. But I love the idea that he has his logo as a functioning Batarang and it pops out of a suit and he can use it to like cut wires or throw it eventually. It really makes it stand out. This is the greatest armored Batman look we're ever going to have. It is perfect and I am in love with the design choices they've made and how unique and creative it is. At number 15, we have Ms. Marvel's first suit in the MCU from her Disney Plus series, which is a picture-perfect adaptation of Kamala's costume. It's like you just took that suit and brought it to life right from the page to the screen. It is a gorgeous suit, and I'm so happy that they did it so faithfully because Kamala Khan is one of my favorite characters, and it's nice to see her in a costume that really stands out amongst the rest of the MCU. I love how bright and vibrant the colors are. This is exactly how Kamala should look in the MCU, and I hope that they bring this back in her future appearances because they nailed it first try. It's not like other comic book movie costumes either where they shy away from certain elements because they're too comic booky, like the domino mask. She's the only character in the MCU who has one of those domino masks, and I'm so 
happy they gave it to her because it's a lost art. A lot of the times when they do these live action suits, whether it's Marvel, DC, anyone, they like to stray away from them because they might work in the comics or they could look goofy in live action, but they actually did it here and I'm really glad because it's such a cool part of her costume and it makes her really stand out amongst others in the MCU. So I'm glad that they really kept that here. I'm also really glad they kept the scarf because when you look at Captain Marvel, they really shy away from using that sash, but for Kamala, they let her keep that scarf and I think that's really good because it's another thing that makes her stand out but look more unique and in a universe where there's so many superheroes you have to be able to stand out and i think they're doing a really good job with this suit my favorite part of it though is probably the redefining of the lightning bolt because obviously there was no ms marvel before kamala in the mcu carol danvers went straight to captain marvel so you can't just have her take that lightning bolt logo so the way that they redefined it from a lightning bolt to the letter k in arabic is so smart and like a genius move i don't know how they were the first to make that connection but i really love that and i hope that that becomes the standard in even the comics because it gives kamala more of her own unique identity while still keeping that iconic imagery and it ties together the suit really well along with the converse i love that she just has normal shoes on because it adds a human element to it and shows that yeah she's just a kid she's just out there living her dream as a superhero and she doesn't need these fancy boots or anything she just has her converse on i think it's a really nice detail to keep those and it really just embodies what makes this suit so perfect because it has all these little character details in there and it just works so well as a costume it's detailed not over designed and i really hope that they bring it back in the future because it is a perfect suit number 14 is mysterio from spider-man far from home if you've been following along with the channel long enough you know that mysterio is my goat i love him he's my favorite villain of all time so i was really excited to see how they adapted him in far from home and they did not disappoint me at all with such a goofy comic book costume i was worried they wouldn't be able to translate it properly or they wouldn't do the fishbowl or they just skip out on things but no they went all out and gave us a perfect mysterio costume and a suit that is genuinely one of the best in any comic book movie ever i am obsessed with the details on this for the cape to the chest plate to that goofy off fishbowl it is just everything i could ever want in a mysterio outfit the fact that they found a way to make the fishbowl work in live action and not look extremely silly that makes it deserve to be in the top 14 alone i cannot believe that it works so well the addition of the moving smoke inside there really adds to the mystique of it all and i think it just looks so good they really exceeded my expectations from this suit it takes the simple design from the comics it keeps the core of it there but it reinvents it from the mcu so he's not just in this green scaly onesie they added that chest plate which i think adds a lot it looks really cool i love the addition of the lights to the costume also it adds to this mystic vibe he has going and that there's more more than it seems because how is he powering these lights on a suit obviously he's not gonna be able to because it's not a real suit the texture on there is so good i love the details on all the gauntlets they just look so otherworldly which is great since he's trying to portray that he's from a different universe and even if you take away this costume you want to look at mysterio's real suit the motion capture suit that he wears is genius taking the special effects guy and making his costume just a regular motion capture suit is so good and it even has the little eyes on there as easter eggs i just love it this is a perfect costume and they did my man mysterio justice I'm so glad that we got this costume. I don't think there's any way it could have been better. This is just a phenomenal costume. The fact that we have Mysterio in the MCU and he looks this good is a miracle, but I'm so happy it's real. At number 13, we have Ben Affleck's Batman, specifically from Batman v Superman. Now, I've made it very clear I'm not the biggest fan of Snyder's Batman. I don't like how he's portrayed with killing in this, in this darker tone where Batman's lost all hope and wants to murder Superman. It's just not for me. If you like it, I'm happy for you. I hope you enjoy it. But I have to admit, my God, this is the perfect costume for batman there's never been a better batman suit in live action and i honestly don't know if there ever will be i respect the armored batman i think it makes sense why they adapted so much in live action i love the pattinson suit as you already know but seeing batman in a skin tight costume just hits different this is exactly how he should be looking and snyder managed to translate it perfectly and capture the essence of the character in a way that nobody else has been able to but here we have that gray suit finally i love a gray batman suit i think that all batman suits should either be black and gray version or the blue and gray version and personally i'm always a blue and gray batman fan but i will have take a black and gray suit it adds so much more contrast to the suit you can see the details and for batman while he is a representation of fear in gotham city he's also hope for people down there you want to be able to become a symbol and being able to actually see that symbol with the black on the gray goes so far in showing that the padded look on there goes so hard where it's still this skin tight outfit with some padding to just give him the protection he needs in gotham city i really like how it's simple which goes a long way in my opinion i like how the gauntlets are simple not over designed to where all these lines are there that don't need to be and i like how you have the gold utility belt the colors are a little muted i understand that it doesn't fit that universe that he made but in a perfect world we'd have a brighter utility belt but i'm just glad that he made it gold because this is truly a perfect batman suit if i had to change anything i would definitely make the ears a little longer i know he went for that dark knight returns look which has the shorter ears but personally for my taste i just like a batman with longer ears and i think that they need to show the cheekbones i understand that batman adaptations didn't like to have that because 
what's the practicality and all but i think it's just so much better when you actually can see his jawline and only having a part of his face looks a little silly at times but other than that i think the entire suit as a whole is gorgeous i am so obsessed with it i'm really glad that snyder was able to bring such a perfect suit to live action at number 12 we have deadpool's costume from the upcoming movie deadpool and wolverine now, I didn't think it was possible for Marvel to improve on the Deadpool costume, but somehow they did. Don't get me wrong, it looked gorgeous in those Fox movies, especially for the fact that they gave it color, which is shocking because those cowards at Fox hate anything that looks even remotely like the comics. So it was nice to see Deadpool get a comic accurate costume over there, but when he came over to the MCU, I'm really happy that they made necessary changes to make this perfect suit even better. That deeper and bolder red they changed the suit color to works so much better here, especially for the MCU which has embraced the bright colors of the comics. You don't need the desaturated red they used over there. And I think it goes a long way in really making this suit pop on screen. I love what they did with it. It is a huge upgrade from those movies. They even changed up a few little details. Like I like that they committed to the little face and the belt buckle. It's not just this icon that resembles his logo. It's actually his logo now because of course it is. That's exactly what Deadpool would do. Even the texture I think is a huge improvement on the other one because the other suit had that leathery rubbery look that all the Fox costumes did. But now over here they changed it to where it's a softer feel to it which I think is a good choice. It looks much more comfortable. I love a good soft suit like that. We have enough shiny leathery costumes out there let me see some more costumes that actually feel comfortable to wear and i like the matte finish to it where there's not really much shine and i really like that and just talking about the costume in general from both versions it actually has the white eyes which i didn't think would be ever a good idea to introduce in live action because a character like deadpool is so expressive but through ryan reynolds performance and the little cgi tweaks they do to make the eyes move it just works so well as this larger than life costume that actually embodies deadpool in the perfect way i'm so glad we have this suit and they keep improving on it i hope that they somehow manage to keep making it look even better than next appearance but i'm just glad that we have a suit that looks this good and we're seeing these x-men characters look how they should number 11 is captain america's suit from avengers age of ultron everyone has their favorite of steve's captain america suits for some it's the aforementioned winter soldier stealth suit others it's the military uniform for the first avenger for me my hot take is that the Age of Ultron costume will always be the best. I think it's a perfect blend of all the suits put together into this modern red, white, and blue Captain America design. It has the brightest colors of any costume, which is nice because a lot of the time, the MCU suffered from desaturating the colors of Steve's costumes, try saying that five times fast, that took me forever to do, to make it look more realistic and down to earth and something that a soldier would actually wear. And I get it, it works for the universe, I still think the actual designs there are good, but the colors here really pop on screen in a way that is exactly how Captain America should be looking. And I also love how they added more red accents to the costume. I didn't know how I would feel about that at first, but I think they work really well, especially that little outline on the star on his chest. It's a really good addition that I think works for this universe. I like how it makes the star pop. Your eyes are kind of drawn to it more, and there's just more detail there in a way that doesn't hurt the suit. It's not over-designed. It's a great reinvention of the classic costume in a way that really honors the Captain America mythos and the iconic look of his, but brings it into the 21st century, and I think that this should have been a suit going forward. The only thing I would have changed is to add the scales from endgame because they nailed that look i never thought we'd see that in live action but if we got that on this suit i think we'd have a suit that would be so powerful that it would probably be at number one on this list truthfully there's so many good elements in all these captain america costumes and i think if you just put them together you'd have the perfect suit but for me the age of ultron one will always be my favorite i love what they did here and i really appreciate seeing captain america in a bright colorful costume as he should be now as we enter the top 10 here's when things get serious so at number 10 we have Brandon Routh's Superman costume from the Arrowverse Crisis on Infinite Earths event. I know, you probably weren't expecting anything from the Arrowverse here given their track record, but I can't lie, they cooked here. Alright guys, like look at this costume. This is exactly how Superman should look. I love everything about it. I could talk about it for days. It is perfect, and I don't know if we're ever going to see a better Superman costume than this, truthfully. I hope that James Gunn can outdo it, but I, honestly, there's no shame in losing to a beauty like this. And why do I say this? It's because he has the undies, and in my opinion, you are not a good Superman costume if you don't have the undies. I know a lot of people think they're silly or goofy or don't work in live action and I think that's where you're wrong because look at this costume and it immediately disproves that because it somehow makes the underwear look good on a suit and this is not the first Superman costume with trunks. We've seen it in the Christopher Reeve movies which have a much simpler costume which is okay. It was from the times. I think it works for them. I like the look of it but it just doesn't compare to this. Even the Tyler Hecklin Superman starts out with that in a costume that nearly took this spot, but when it came to Superman, I had to pick my favorite one, and it's always gonna be Brandon Routh's Kingdom Come suit. I love how simple and clean the design is. They don't try and add any unnecessary lines. They still keep the spandex look, but they do it in a way with a nice texture and a beautiful logo. They flawlessly incorporated that logo there. I love the belt buckle on there. It just feels like the Superman costume from the comics brought to life in the best way. They translated everything identically to how it should be, and I 
I think it needs so much more appreciation. The texture is that right balance between the spandex and Kryptonian look. And even the yellow variant he gets at the end might be my favorite version of this too, because I love the Kingdom Come suit and what it stands for, but the yellow Kingdom Come variant looks so good, it might be my favorite Superman logo ever, which is why I'm happy that Gun Superman is using that logo, because it just looks so clean, and it looks like something an alien would be wearing, but also it actually does represent the S, and I just love this costume. This is always going to be my favorite Superman suit, and I think everyone needs to give the Arrowverse their flowers for this one, because you know what? They did a good job here. They cooked, they got the best Superman costume, and I don't know if anyone's ever going to be able to top it. At number 9, we have Spider-Man's costume from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, that movie didn't get a lot right. It is a mess, but they nailed the costume here. I appreciate what they were trying to do in The Amazing Spider-Man 1 with this new take on the character and a completely new and unique look. I get it. Respect them taking a swing. I do not like that suit at all, though, and I don't think it worked very well. So I'm glad that they went with a more iconic look for the character and changed things up because I think they nailed it. This is a flawless costume that perfectly brings in everything that makes Spider-Man look good. I love how, everyone say it with me, simple it is. They took the Spider-Man look from the comics, they brought it to live action in a way that still makes it their own because of the unique choices they made that make it stand out. The best thing this suit has going for it are those eyes. I am so glad we finally got a Spider-Man costume that has the big eyes because if you look at the comics, he's always got these big expressive eyes and while they can't be expressive in this movie, you don't need to because Andrew Garfield's performance is so electric that you can tell what he's doing just from that body language. So having those big eyes on there just adds this comforting look to him and makes him feel like this cartoonish superhero in a good way to where he's larger than life. And I'm just so glad to see these big bright white eyes on there because it balances really well with that red mask and I love how vibrant the colors are here. They play off each other well. I even like the raised webbing. My biggest hot take is that I don't love the raised webbing on the Raimi suit. So to see it here, it really looks good when you get it right because it's not too big that it's getting in the way but it's still raised enough that you could see the texture from it adds a lot to an otherwise simple costume in a good way. Even the logo, I love what they did with it. I didn't think I would at first but the more I look at it, the more I love it. I like how long the legs are and how it goes down his body. If I would have changed anything, I would probably raise it up a little bit. It's a little too low on his chest but I still like the idea of it. It looks good regardless even if it could use a few tweaks. This costume is just the classic iconic Spider-Man look brought to life in a way that honors the character and I'm so happy that they gave us an iconic Spider-Man look in a way that is their own because they took risks and made it stand out and I'm forever grateful that this suit exists because my god did they make a banger of a suit. At number 8 we have Doctor Strange's suit from Thor Ragnarok. Now Doctor Strange is someone who's always had some pretty underrated costumes. I would say all of them are really good. He hasn't had a single bad one. They're all really faithful adaptations from the comics as they've all managed to bring that look from the page to the screen in a way that perfectly embodies the character and everything he stands for which I think is great because a lot of people haven't been very fortunate with their comic costumes. And to see Strange get suits that are so good they barely have to tweak it between appearances it's really nice because it means they nailed it first try and they're very confident in his look as they should be. It's perfect but none is better than a suit in Ragnarok and it's all because of those yellow gloves. Now Doctor Strange in the comics has an iconic look but that signature style from the early 60s when he was created always had those yellow gloves and they could look a little silly but I think they look really nice here and it adds that pop of color to his suit which you like to see because Doctor Strange as a character is always working with the mystical arts and I think it's nice to have those gloves there because it really completes the look in my opinion. I like the blue tunic he has on it looks very mystical the cloak is obviously the best part with a big collar and the cloak just bellowing in the wind i just love those yellow gloves i'm bummed that they didn't really bring them back in any other future appearances because i think that the yellow gloves go a long way in really tying this whole look together it's so simple but it adds a lot in my opinion it really solidifies this as one of my favorite looks in the entire mcu and comic book movie genre his suits still look gorgeous it properly mystical but still realistic and fit the mcu's tone all while giving him his own unique style to help him stand out and it'll always be one of my favorite costumes i am in love with this look i think it looks perfect no matter how strange he looks i'm sorry no i'm not i'm not sorry Number 7 is Peacemaker, the man willing to kill any man, woman, or child to achieve his goal of peace. There's no world where this should work. This is one of the goofiest comic designs I've ever seen. It is so over the top and unrealistic. It is mind blowing to me that they took such a silly design and they made it look really good in live action. He's got that goofy on toilet bowl helmet and it's a perfect one to one translation because they embrace how silly it looks. They constantly make jokes about it in the movie to kind of lampshade how stupid it looks which is the smart move because that's never going to be able to seriously be done in live action. But it also helps to reinforce Chris's character because it shows how delusional he is and that he's willing to wear this stupid outfit all for the name of peace. Besides him wearing the goofiest helmet I've ever seen and making it look cool, the rest of the suit is gorgeous. It is full of these bright and vibrant colors that all come together with that red, white, and blue on the costume. It's not like Peacemaker has this elaborate costume like Spider-Man or Batman where there's all these different pieces and it's hard to translate into live action, so I'm glad that they were able to do it. But it's the fact that they didn't shy away from 
the sillier elements of it. But all these colors come together to form this red, white, and blue suit for him. I like that it's more casual wear. It feels like someone who's not backed by like the military or has billions of dollars and they could make because it's really just like a pair of pants with some extra padding on that chest piece. And I just think it's a really good design. They didn't shy away from anything. It's not like they covered up his arms because they're impractical or they gave him these high tech gloves. No, this is exactly what Peacemaker should look like. And I'm so glad they committed to the bit and went all out with this on this list. It is probably the best one to one translation from the comics. And I am just so grateful that they embraced this stupid outfit and made it look good. It shows how far the comic book movie genre has come to where we've gone from bland, uninspired suits to this Peacemaker outfit that's so over the top. And it just makes me happy every time I look at it. And I cannot wait to see more of this insane character. Coming in at number six is Moon Knight, a show that is very important to me as it brought my favorite character into live action. And I love the way they reinvented not just the Moon Knight suit, but even the Mr. Knight suit a little bit. And I'm going to put both of these costumes in one spot here because I can do what I want. It's my video. You can't stop me. You're already this far into it. But these costumes are some of the best made suits in the entire MCU. I'm obsessed with how unique and detailed they are because they stand out amongst everything else in the MCU. These costumes are so special in the way that they don't go by the traditional MCU standards. It is a gorgeous reinvention from the comics. It's not the look from the comics at all. Moon Knight traditionally looks much different and that he usually wears this all white outfit that is more of a spandex look and I love that look and I would have been happy if they translated it to live action but I like that they did something new here because it fits the tone that the MCU version was going for. It merges the Egyptian mythos that the show is focusing on with the classic Moon Knight suit from the comics and it turns him to basically a mummy and I love that idea. At his core, Moon Knight is a mummy. That is the whole thing about this character is that he's reborn and he serves this god. And I like that they leaned into that by showing him wrapped in this ceremonial armor. And I think it looks really good. I like that they still have that all white suit design and they kept the glowing eyes, which makes sense because you can actually do it here because he's more of a supernatural character. So I like that they can have that aspect from the comics. And I really love the hieroglyphics throughout with so many other details, like the gold accents from the armored plating sneaking through. It just shows that there's so many different layers to this armor and it goes such a long way and making him stand out. My favorite part of it though is the moon insignia on his chest because obviously is the crescent darts that he can use and has an endless supply of which I think goes so hard but beneath that is a full moon and I think that's such a cool choice that goes often unnoticed because you can't see it from far away. It adds a lot to it and it just is the perfect Moon Knight suit for live action. I hope they never change it and we get to see the suit for a long time because it is beautiful to look at. And he's so lucky of a character that he has two suits and the Mr. Knight costume is perfect. It's hard to mess that up because it's really just a white suit. I'd be shocked if they managed to F that up. But they did it perfectly. They even did it better in the comics in my opinion and exceeded my expectations. A lesser show would have just given him a plain white suit and a sock mask and called it a day but they went out of their way to give him so many details with the hieroglyphics in the printing on the suit or the little crescent collar he has there. It just all comes together to create a really unique suit design and one that I'm so grateful we have. The Moon Knight show exceeded in all of the designs here but these two costumes will always be some of my favorites and I love how they took risks and reinvented the character and it completely paid off. I'm obsessed with these. I'm gonna steal them from Marvel Studios one day. I'm very confident in this. As we break into the top five now with what I think are the most accurate suits that not only embody the comic character but flawlessly translate to live action, we have Blue Beetle. It is an incredibly underrated movie that also gave us one of the greatest comic book movie suits of all time. I love everything about this suit so much. They don't shy away from anything from the comics and they give us a one-to-one -one adaption to that gorgeous suit. It is such a unique design and is unlike anything else in any other comic book movie because they are all in on what makes Blue Beetle look so good. From those striking yellow eyes to the bright blue to the neon lights, I am just so glad that they went all out with this suit. And bonus points for this suit being completely practical. I love that they didn't just CGI it all over him because they could have easily gone out of their way to just use this CGI model, but no. They actually put Zolo in the suit on set and it pays off because it feels real and tangible. They also even put a scarab in Zolo's back, alright? Just trust me, don't look that up. He's stuck with that forever now. That's real method acting, people. It's clean, it's colorful, and of course, it's simple. It's just the bare necessities and it works so well. Having this primarily black suit with the blue accents that form the chest piece and the little scarab arms around it are such a nice detail to add a lot of depth and texture to it. It just feels like a real authentic costume. Even the helmet works. Everything about this suit is perfect. It is a beautiful costume that should serve as the standard for live action translations. I'm always happy to see them take a risk or try something new, but you can never go wrong with just perfectly translating the character's design from the comics and that's exactly what they did here for Blue Beetle and he 100% deserves a spot in this top 5. I'm really excited to see this character again because he's so fun in that movie and also just to see this gorgeous suit in action because it is phenomenal how they managed to pull this off. 
Number four is Black Panther's costume from Captain America Civil War. The MCU Black Panther costumes have not missed. Whether it's this first suit, the second suit he gets with the purple accents, even Killmonger's suit or Shuri's suit, they all look gorgeous, but I don't think any of them are better than this first suit here. They peaked at the start. It is the quintessential design for Black Panther. With a character like his, the simpler the better in my opinion. The purple accents are nice, but I like when things are just a simple black design with that stunning silver accents. It goes a long way and it strikes the perfect balance between detailed and simple. The lighting is the most important thing about this suit, because in the dark he just looks terrifying because you can barely see anything about him, he's just a silhouette, and it makes him all the more terrifying as this hunter coming to get you. And at daytime you can see all those pretty details on there, they represent this Wakandan culture that only enhances the suit design for me. But I love that there's that dichotomy between two different looks and the different lightings, and it just goes so far in establishing how Black Panther can look in his presence. My favorite part of this suit by far are those shiny silver accents on it, they contrast really well against the matte black, and they make the details stand out from that beautiful collar design to his white eyes which look really good the mcu is often afraid to bring the white eyes into live action most of the time but for a suit like black panther it makes tons of sense and it looks really good it's practical and tangible while still looking gorgeous this is still a perfect suit design i'm so happy with how it turned out if i had to do one thing i just really want to see black panther with a cape i feel like it's not much to ask he's royalty if we do get the character rebooted after secret wars i think it'd be nice to just give him the cape but i love this suit i think they peaked early you cannot do better than this one they set the bar high with a design that is perfectly Black Panther. At number three, we have Aquaman's classic orange and green suit. They actually did it. I never thought it'd be possible, but they did it. The Snyder movies always try to give him this serious armor with these muted colors, but not only did they manage to bring it to live action, they did, and it looks beautiful. It has the iconic bright shiny orange on that suit, and I'm so glad they didn't shy away from it, and they just went all out and giving him a completely orange torso. There's no different segments. They don't throw in green in there to try and balance it out. He just has a completely orange shirt. He even even has the logo on his belt. It's so rewarding to me to see this look brought in live action. The scaly texture on the armor makes it protective. It serves a purpose and fits the underwater theme. It's not just done for the sake of it. They actually lean into these aspects of the characters and give it reasons for being in the costumes. I love that they did this with only three colors really. And then they kept things simple with the green gauntlets and pants. I love how they didn't try and add in unnecessary elements to this. They just kept things as the three colors that are iconic to the character in the comics. And it works so well. And it should be a lesson to creatives that people want to see these these iconic costumes and if you just put in the work you can make them work in live action. I thought this would have been the hardest suit to ever bring to live action but not only did they do it they made one that looks better than I could have ever imagined. It blew away all my expectations. It was so good they just kept it for the sequel. You got a stealth suit for a little bit but nobody remembers that because they had the orange suit. If we ever get Aquaman in the DCU just take the suit. You can't do any better than this just take the suit and we'll call it a day because it is flawless. Number two is Spider-Man's costume from the end of No Way Home that final swing suit. Everyone always debates the best Spider-Man costume. Everyone has a different opinion, all different tastes, and what people want to see in a Spider-Man costume. For me, the final swing suit takes it, and I think it'll be so hard to ever beat this. This is the Spider-Man costume I've wanted to see for years. It brings the parts of the character in a live action in a way that no other suit has, and is the perfect evolution of the MCU Spider-Man suit to make him look more like the comics and a traditional Spider-Man. Those bright red and blue colors in the suit look incredible. This is the most vibrant Spider-Man we've ever gotten, and I think we ever will get. They do the character justice in a way that we haven't seen before, because they're not afraid to go all out with the colors to where they mute the blue and red a little bit more and make them darker. No, they go all out here with the blue and red in a way that resembles the classic Spider-Man I've always wanted to see. The best part of it though in my opinion is that shiny reflective blue. It's such a unique look and I love everything about it. It adds some really cool shading that resembles the comic more because in the comics depending on his angle and the lighting and design the shading is always changing. And I think this reflective blue here is a great way to bring that to life and do the Spider-Man look justice in a way that hasn't been done before. It really stands out and makes it pop on screen. It contrasts so well with the hand sewn red look. It's such a great way to make these colors work better because the shades they chose are complementary to each other and they work so well. I'm so glad they kept the old expressive eyes because I love that they've been able to show those different expressions from the comics and I really also like the new logo a lot. It's like that blockier old logo they were using in the other suits but they change it to make it look more like a spider and they add these sharper elements to it. They round it out and I think it looks really good. It's also like a unique Spider-Man logo which is nice to see because I feel like at this point everybody has their own take on a Spider-Man logo. So to see one that's actually unique and builds off of what came before, it's so good and it looks really clean on the suit. It's also another costume on this list that has thematic significance because this is the one that Peter made on his own in the MCU. Handmade at Rock Bomb, he bought a sewing machine and got to work and that only makes me love it even more. Marvel will suffer if they ever change it. I'm prepared to do some really drastic things if they give him a different suit or change any designs on there because this is the best Spider-Man costume we're ever going to get. I don't see how they can ever improve it. It's unique, it's new, it's stylish, and I will burn down Marvel Studios if they ever even 
think about changing it. And finally, at number one, we have Sam Wilson's Captain America costume from the finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This will forever be my favorite live-action comic book movie costume. It is a perfect translation from the comics. I love everything about it. I did not think we could ever see a suit like this in the MCU, and I'm so glad they proved me wrong because they embraced all the elements of it and brought it to screen in a way that looks perfect. I'm always going to be in love with this costume and the gorgeous, vibrant colors they put on the suit. It fixes the other Captain America suit problems and embraces the look from the comics. Like I said before, the Captain America suit have always been afraid of embracing these bright colors, but not now. We're in a new era of the MCU, and they gave Sam his classic look. The prominent bright white looks so clean. You never see white on these costumes looking this bright and vibrant, but I'm really glad that they didn't shy away from it, because it makes him stand out from other characters, but also other Captain Americas that came before, because it represents purity. The costume designers said this. When they were making the suit, they wanted to give him more white, because in their eyes, it makes him the purest Captain America. That's why Steve had some white on his costume, and Walker had none, because Sam is the most pure Captain America, and they wanted to show that visually, and they used the color white to show that. Am I biased? Yes, but also I can back it up completely. Just look at this suit. How could you not love it? It is the perfect comic book movie costume. Everything about it is on point. I like that it has the cowl. It's such a special design from the comics because it's uniquely Sam's from the red goggles to the cowl covering part of his head. It's a little impractical, but I don't care. It just looks good, and they managed to do it perfectly in live action. I'm bummed about Brave New World replacing it. It's gonna be in there for a little bit. You can see it in the background of one set photo I hyperanalyzed. The new suit looks good. It's just not as good because it's less of Sam's unique identity, but regardless, I'm still glad we have this gorgeous costume. It'll be hard to top it, but I hope these comic book movies continue to try. But for now, Sam's Captain America costume will forever be my favorite. This is the best Captain America suit we've ever gotten. It is the best comic book movie suit we're ever going to get, in my opinion. I find new things to love in this costume every time I look at it. It takes elements from his Falcon suit and brings it into his own Captain America design to honor his legacy while embracing this new future for him. Like, I love the wings on the costume, how expansive they are, and the red, white, and blue really pop. They come together in such a unique way. Looking at him, you know exactly who he is. That is Captain America. I hope we're going to see this costume again one day because it is unbeatable. It is my favorite. I have a poster of it in my room. I have the action figures. I'm really glad that they got my favorite character suit right. And putting all biases aside, I truly believe this is the best comic book movie costume ever. It means the world to me that my favorite character can have such a good suit and that they nailed the design first try. I really hope we get to see it again because this is exactly how Captain America should look. He's a beautiful, bright, bold symbol and deserves this place at the top of list as the greatest comic book movie costume of all time. And there we have it. Those are my top 25 favorite comic book movie costumes. Let me know what you think of my rankings in the comments below, where you can feel free to yell at me all you want for some of my more controversial takes. I'd love to hear everyone's five favorite suits and see what you all have to say. I'm sure everyone's opinions are different, so it'll be interesting to see the variety in answers. While you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And special shout out to Wally B for suggesting this video topic. If there's anything you want me to cover, check out the link in the description down below. I'll make sure to credit you in everything. You can have the highest honor known to man being immortalized in a YouTube video by someone with over a thousand subscribers. I know. It's a big deal. But for real, thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Now go watch this other video where I'll bring back the black leather costumes. This is a threat.